Welcome. Obviously, this is the New York Jets video book. And, you know, it's it's kind of funny why I chose to do this, this playbook and dive into a lot of plays in it. Uh, it's primarily because of a formation that I ran into in, while playing this playbook, and it's Gun Bunch, Open Offset. Okay, it, this formation is beautiful, and this play here, RPO Trap Alert Screen, is just incredible um you know the strength of this play is that it stretches the defense horizontally uh, almost better than any other play in the game okay so this is the first play we're going to go over um and it's a play we can kind of throw as the core play in a little mini scheme we can develop here so we're going we're gonna to go over rpo trap alert screen to get a better understanding of uh, what we're looking for when we come out in this play where to attack and etc so uh without further ado why don't we go ahead and and run some clip. Okay, so why don't we go over the logistics of the play? Okay, let me grab my marker here. Okay, obviously, you know, you have, you know, there's different types of runs. I'm pretty sure you understand that. Uh, but we have a trap run going on on the inside. And trap runs are very good when you are trapping the three technique defensive tackle and when the defense is spread out okay trap runs really aren't that great when the box is loaded up with different guys and etc but the beauty about this play again is because the formation stretches out the defense you know if they play in such a way in which they defend other elements of the play and leave the run kind of they soften up the box it just opens up you know a perfect opportunity to gash them with the trap run okay so I'm not gonna go into details about what exactly the trap run does um, I'll probably do that maybe a little bit later but in essence you know there's three different options on this play and the very first option is the trap run okay a another option you have on this play is to throw this little quick out route I don't know if you would even qualify this as an out route it's under five yards but he breaks outside to the sideline, maybe like an arrow route. It's almost like a mix between a flat and out route. Okay, so that's another option. Okay, and another option you have in this play is to throw the screen out here. Okay, so just with that in mind, thinking about you have three different options on this play to attack the defense horizontally, okay, on, on a horizontal plane. Now, what's so great about that is this play when you call this play you you really aren't looking to see like the prime component of where you're trying to attack like the biggest you're not looking to figure out what the defense is running per se i'm talking about like you know are they running cover four or cover three does this look like cover two you know i'm not i'm not going to say that that's not important you maximize the effectiveness of this play when you come out with the mindset of i'm going to attack wherever they are aligned improperly okay wherever they are misaligned anywhere on this on this field okay if they're misaligned over here misaligned inside here or misaligned out here you can attack okay there's certain play calls where you know maybe the defense is misaligned over here with the corner and the safety but the you know the play that you have called doesn't have anything to attack and exploit the misalignment on this side of the field okay well, this play, if you are misaligned anywhere, if you don't, you know, if you pose a disadvantage numbers wise anywhere on this field, we can attack it. Okay. So, you know, if you're running against somebody who's not very good at understanding leverage, alignment, um, advantages and numbers, this play will destroy them. Okay. So looking at the screen here, um, this is one of the rare instances when you call this play where we really don't have a good option, okay? Because we have three on three over here, so we can't throw the screen, okay? Think about the screen, you know, this guy's gonna get the ball and these two are gonna block two guys, right? Well, they have an extra guy to make the tackle. So, you know, whenever you get three on three on the outside, you really don't even look to throw the screen, right? So we can't throw it over there. If we look at the box, we have five blockers going up and dealing with six defenders. 
So, you know, that's the advantage to the defense. We really can't run it because they'll have an unblocked defender and the trap run isn't really good with um, a loaded box like that in the first place, okay? So then you take your eyes over here and you see we really don't have an advantage here because this corner is kind of hemmed up on this guy. Although he is playing inside leverage, um, I really just don't like the fact that, you know, this is a shallow route to the outside. It's really not a the optimal route to run against leverage like this okay because if you throw if you have a quarterback who throws it anywhere inside i mean this guy can take it to the house right so i mean this is a rare instance i, I called this play i don't know I, I believe it was the first play of the game yeah it was for me you know he threw an interception or whatever so you know i come out in this play looking for misalignment issues or number advantage issues and there are none so you know, I'm looking to check out here. Now, the great thing about this play is when you find yourself in this situation, it's usually because the defense is aligned in such a way in which you can, you get a lot of opportunities on the outside. So, I mean, if you look at this, it looks like one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. It looks like one-on-one -on -one here. It looks like he's bringing pressure, right? So, you know, we can call a play. We can check out into something like some type of man rub route uh, because we're one-on-one -on -one across the board and we just check into like a man beater okay whatever that is but you're gonna see my opponent do something here he's gonna check out so I guess he was afraid of what we had to offer there okay so now looking at this the alignment of the defense I don't care if they're in cover two I don't care if he's doing this right I don't care if this safety is gonna drop down and play you know, flat post snap. And this guy's playing like squatting, something stupid. It doesn't matter. Their alignment alone puts them at a major disadvantage. Now, looking at this play, obviously we don't have an advantage here, right? Because the corner is still sitting kind of low, and then he has safety help over the top. So we really can't throw this route over here. You know, the safety over the top. You know, if he's playing deep half, it awards this corner the ability to be very aggressive underneath and potentially jump all over the route. You really can't throw that. Looking in the box, he's got six guys. No, he's got seven guys. I think I miscounted last time, did I? I probably did. So they actually have seven against our five. Six, seven, yeah. So, you know, we don't have an advantage there, obviously. Right? But if you look over here, we have three guys dealing with one corner, one guy. So look at this screen. I mean, you know, you just get this guy and you can climb up the field and wall off uh, the potential safety or the second defender in. We throw this screen out here and then we should be good to go for a touchdown. So first play, throw that screen, and you can take it to the house. So, you know, and that's what he gets for I mean we were looking to exploit misalignment we, he was good at first but then he checked out um, because you know maybe he was afraid of us gashing him due to him blitzing but he checked into something in which his alignment was bad so we just exploited it and he was actually in cover three all right so again we call this play we're coming out looking for misalignment issues and places where we can attack leverage so looking at this play, he has five in the box. We have five blockers. That's an advantage to the offense in the running game. And the reason is because, you know, all we have to do is get a hat on a hat, double team at the point of attack in certain run plays, and then peel off to pick up a second defender, um, you know, a defender in the second level on runs like, you know, power runs and et cetera. On trap runs, it's a little bit different. Let me draw it up here. Uh, basically, you know, the, this guy should take him and essentially what happens is you know I'll get in deeper into it later on this guard is just gonna leave this guy here he's not gonna even touch him he's just gonna get immediately to the second level and get hands on the second defender and what that does is you know this defensive tackle is flying up the field with a lot of momentum you know, you think about it. It's like, oh, man, they, they didn't block me, right? I, I'm going to get a free sack. I, you know, it's a bust in, in the offensive protection. Only to get blown up by a pulling guard who's coming over to pretty much wham him. So you're using his momentum against him. That's why this trap run is really good against one-gap uh, defenses. Like if a defense was playing cover two 
everybody had a uh, single gap. I mean, a trap run or a wham would be very good to deal with a defensive tackle who's only responsible for one gap because their eyes get big once they, you know, get free up the field in their gap and you get a guy to use his momentum against them, pulling over and just crushing them, right? So you pretty much always get him and there's like a, a little lane that opens up for your running back to push up and in, into the uh into the box okay so we can run it here okay this is bad over here you see how there's two corners on this guy so obviously we can't throw that but then look over here we got a three on two deal here so you know we can actually run it if we wanted to and we can throw the screen over here as well just on numbers alone and and the problem with his defense is, you know, this offensive play almost forces the defense to have to be in single high defense. I've noticed that if you're in a double high safety shell with this defense, I'm uh, against this offensive play, uh, you're pretty much almost always having leverage or man-to-man uh, -man number uh, disadvantage, uh, a disadvantage in the numbers game somewhere along the field, whether it be you know, in the box or the screen, okay? Uh, your best bet is to have single high. So, you know, obviously this guy shouldn't be here. He should be probably in the box. And then you have this guy down. That way you have three on three here. You have six in the box to deal with our run. You have a corner on this guy playing hemmed up. And then you have a single high safety, okay? So, you know, you may say, okay, well, there's the weakness of the defense. Well, you know, not necessarily just because a particular look is... Uh, what's needed for a uh, defense to slow down a particular offensive play doesn't mean that the offensive play is bad. What it, you got to think of the bright side of that. Now we force teams to have to play cover one and cover three and play single high, right? So think about that. Then you can, you've condensed their playbook down to instead of having six different shell coverages like cover four zone, cover two zone, cover two man or cover zero, you kind of force them out of that into cover three or cover one. It makes your play calling a lot easier. It allows you to attack in a variety of different ways to exploit cover three and cover one. So enough rambling. Let's see what I did here. He brings his safety down a little bit. So that only screams for me to throw, you know, outside even more. Okay, so now what's the pre-snap read of this? If you watch my pre-snap read video, we see that's a double high safety look. So here, I'll put double high here. And I'll put single high here. I know you're probably tired of me saying this. You know, I just can't help myself. Okay, so if we have a double high safety look and they are being honest, they're not disguising coverage, they could be running cover four zone, cover two zone, cover two man, or cover zero. If they're playing single high defense, it's one of two different coverages, cover three or cover one man. That's it, okay? So we have two deep safeties. So if he's being honest and he's not disguising coverage, it's not cover three and it's not cover one man, okay? The reason why I have to say it's only if he's telling the truth because he can post snap, you know, be playing actually cover one robber and maybe this safety drops down and this safety plays over the top in the middle, okay? But if he's telling the truth, then it's not cover three or cover one man. So it's one of these four different coverages, okay? So then we go down even further. We look at the corners. You notice, you'll notice how you see the corners are playing outside leverage here. That's when you know it's cover two zone. This is cover two zone, some form of cover two zone. The reason why I know that is because in everything in football is about relating to your help on defense. You want to play to your help. You don't want to play against your help. Okay. So if this corner was in, if they were playing two man, well, the safety is playing deep over the top 
and to the sideline, like deep half help over the top. That's where your help is. So because of that, the corner will want to play inside leverage and underneath trail. Okay, you want to almost funnel your defender to your help. Okay, well, in cover two zone, cover two zone is a little bit different, right? Uh, while in cover two zone, you don't want to play uh, inside leverage because you know if you reroute the receiver to the outside, it puts too much stress on this safety to defend horizontally and over the top. Okay, because you as a corner, you're really not going to trail him all the way up the field. You're eventually going to turn and get your hips back towards the line of scrimmage and play your zone responsibility. Okay, because the offense could be having something coming to the flat, maybe an out by this guy, etc. Okay, so you know while in cover two zone, you primarily want to reroute your receiver to the inside, and that helps out your safety over the top. Okay, because then your safety doesn't have to cover so much ground horizontally. Okay, and it allows him to have an easier job to defend savvy receivers running up the field. Okay, so because of that, think about that. That's what alignment is all about. You want to align in such a way in which you make, you uh, maximize your ability to do your job post snap. So if post snap, as a cover two zone corner, we want to reroute our receivers inside, then that's why they align to the outside so they can reroute them inside. Okay, so whenever you see corners like this aligned kind of outside of the receivers in press position, um, it's some form of cover two zone. So that's what we know. Now, with all that said, it really doesn't matter when running this play, right? Um, and that is because there's a numbers disadvantage over here for the defense. We have three and you have two. Like, I don't care that you're playing some form of flat. As long as this guy gets hands on this guy and you get that guy, you know, we can just rocket it to our guy and just find space and climb up field. Okay, now I say all this, I think I only get a one yard gain on this particular play just to show you that, you know, at times, even though you have a numbers advantage, you know, the opposing team makes a good football play and someone maybe uh, rips off of a block and make a tackle, or sometimes your receivers may dumb out and not do what they're supposed to do because Madden simply, they don't have it coded right. Okay, so, but, you know, even with them having it coded wrong, um, in a lot of instances, this play is still dangerous. So I'll go ahead and snap the ball here. I think I only got like one yard. Let's see. But I know that that's where I got to go with the ball. Yeah, so you look at our two guys. Like, they didn't even block no one, you know. But that's Madden for you. And you see, he was in Tampa, too. Okay, he's in Tampa, too, again. Look, corner's outside. And this corner was originally outside, and he brought him up on a blitz. Looking at this play, we have five in the box. Two, three, four, five. And we have two out here against three. We have three guys, he has one, so we have the advantage on the outside. But we also have the advantage in the box. So you know, again, that's the beauty of this play. You know, you don't have to throw that screen again. He's trying to show us that we have the advantage here. And he wants us to throw this because he thinks that that flat route will get the interception every time. But you don't have to throw that if we also have the advantage somewhere else, which we do here. So I think I ran the ball here. Let's see what happens. I did. And look at the hole there. Why is that? Because they have five defenders. We have five blockers. So it's hat on a hat, and we're off to the races, right? What's worse is, you know, if you get your running back 10 yards up the field, he's one-on-one -on -one with one of these safeties. So, you know, if you have a dangerous running back in space, you know, like Kamara from the Saints or something like that, and you put a move on the safety, you're gone for a touchdown. Okay. So, again, same issues. Two on three, five on five. We can pick where we want to go. He's in cover two zone. He missed a tackle. We pick up 10 yards. What, 12 yards there? So I'm going to wrap this up pretty soon. Uh, you know, I already talked a little bit too much. Sorry for that. So, again, he's in cover two zone again. Um, you know, I'm pretty sure you know why now. And look at the issue over here. It's three on two, borderline three on one. Okay, he also has issues here. You know, there's only... 
Oh, no, he's good here. He's good. He's got six in the box. We have five blockers. Okay. But a lot of times, you know, if you understand the trap run, um, you can still get away with running the ball with six in the box if a guy is a little bit too far outside and you understand the blocking assignments. A lot of times your offensive line may just leave this guy unblocked because he has no way of impacting the play anyways. He takes himself out of the play by aligning improperly outside of the box. Okay. But, you know, that's kind of like an advanced thing. I'm not going to get into that right away. I believe I threw the screen here. Yep. And we picked up three to four yards. Yeah, I want you to think about this. This is me running this play every single play just to showcase how strong it is. So, you know, this is him calling plays knowing that I'm going to run this play. So if you implement this play into your game plan to where you kind of sprinkle it in, it'll make it even more indefensible. Okay. So, okay, what's the problem here, right? So can we throw this guy? No, not really, right? There's a corner here and there's a safety over the top. Allows the corner to be very aggressive if they're playing two-man, right? Can we throw it over here? No, right? He's Obviously, he's sick and tired of us throwing that screen route. Um, so, you know, he has three guys covering over three receivers. We can't throw that. But look at the box. Look at the box. Five, and we have five blockers. So let's go ahead and run it. Pick up eight yards. Run it again. You see what he, he is kind of forced to have to do? He like has to bring a safety down here. You, you like you like we almost dictate to you, like we f almost force you, like you have to play single eye against this particular play in this formation. Because we stretch you so hard horizontally, it makes it almost impossible to play too high. Right? So we run it again. And we should have picked up a lot more, but we still got like six, seven yards. And you notice how he was in cover three buzz press. So he had a double high safety look pre-snap. And that's what buzz does. Buzz shows a two deep safety look pre-snap. And then post snap, this safety may come down while this safety plays deep middle. It's all about disguise, right? Well, you know, the thing is, yeah, it's all fine and dandy, but, you know, your alignment pre-snap still puts you in too deep. So, you know, it's harder for the safety to come down into the box and uh, be a force in the run fit because, he, you know, he may come kind of late. That's why when you watch football, like, you know, a, a defense may be showing too deep and they'll try to rotate into single high as close to the snap of the ball as possible because you don't want to wait until you snap the ball and then you rotate because you can get late into doing your assignments. You know, teams would especially do that against Peyton Manning. Okay, you, you wouldn't want to rotate too early, right? Because you would show too deep like this and, you know, he may have a play called and he's getting ready to snap. And he'll do, he'll, I'm pretty sure you'll remember this. He'll be like, hut, 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 hut. If you do the fake snap, hut, hut. And that's to get the, the defense to, okay, I got to hurry up and rotate, you know, before he snaps the ball. He's about to snap it. I don't want to be too late. And then they rotate. And then he, he sees it. He saw it. So now he knows you're in cover three or cover one. And then he'll check out into something that destroys what you're doing. It, he was just a problem, right? So I don't know why I went on that tangent, but my favorite quarterback is Peyton Manning. So... <laughs> Again, this is almost like a two deep safety look, like a, a double high safety look defense. I mean, this is unnecessary having the safety over the top here, but him doing this weakens the defense somewhere else. Uh, we can't throw this over here, but look at the box. Five in the box. And this will be your typical trap run. I believe you're gonna see this guard immediately go to the second level to get this guy. Your center will block down on the one here and then you know this guy is free coming up the field because the guard just left him but you're gonna see your backside guard pull over and just wham right into that guy there it is 
nine yards. You know, and here's the thing, he might be playing kind of soft like this because he's looking at the time. You know, if you notice three plays ago, it was like one minute and 15 seconds left. We were way down on our side of the end zone, right? Maybe at the 25, 30. So he wasn't too worried about us running this play and picking up yards, but we're picking up nine a clip because we're exploiting where you are weak in regards to uh, leverage and misalignment or where we have a numbers advantage. So yeah, it's 30 second, seconds left, but we're not afraid to run the ball because the advantage is just so, so heavy there. We ran it again. He even used run commit. It didn't matter because we just stay disciplined in, in attacking our, our, uh, our gap up the, up, up the middle with the, the run. And we picked up, who knows, 50 yards. So I'll go ahead and skip over. That's another thing too, this, this offense, this play is good in the red zone as well, especially when you pair it with another run that I'm gonna show you in a different video. So maybe I'll go over a little bit more, maybe. I mean, again, you're going to throw it here. Or you know what? I would actually, this would be a rare instance where I think I would run it. And that is because, yeah, he has six in the box, but no, you know what? Coming to think about it, no, you wouldn't want to run it. You want your trap, your backside guard to be pulling to attack the three technique. So being that this guy is a one technique, you would almost want to flip this play to where this guy is pulling. But flipping the play would get all your receivers on the other side and then that's just a mess. Okay, so in this instance, I would like for me to just throw it over here. I don't remember what I did. I think I threw it over here and we didn't get a good game. No, I ran it. We still picked up seven yards, right? So let's see what happens. So. Remember what I told you, he has six in the box. We have five blockers. So obviously someone's gotta come unblocked. So hopefully they left the, you know, the lead, like the minimum threat, the guy who's least, has the least amount of opportunity to impact the, the run. I would hope that they would leave that guy unblocked. Like you wouldn't wanna leave this guy unblocked knowing that there's going to be an unblocked defender. You wouldn't want to leave this guy unblocked, right? You would want to leave something like maybe this guy. And then you just block everyone else. Block him, block him, block him, block him. Okay? And you're hoping that, you know, the ball would be handed off before he even gets there. And maybe you get some quarterback action and make it seem as if you are uh, may pull off with the ball and run outside to kind of hold him so you still you don't have a disadvantage in the running game so yeah, who do we leave we left this guy and the reason why he's not able to make a play on the ball is i believe this guy was playing like pass commit to where they're dropping back and like cover two so you know i guess his first you know the first thing he wants to do when we snap the ball is to get in his back pedal so i mean it worked against him because you know, he's not an impact into the run, especially when we're running away from him. We could just leave him unblocked, and there's really nothing he can really do. So, yeah, he was the unblocked defender, and we picked up seven yards. In theory, it was a mistake to run it there, but our opponent is playing so soft, you know, cover two and, you know, probably pass commit on top of that, that we were able to get away with that. So here, you know, it's a leverage issue over here. You see it? Three on two, almost three on one. We throw it over there. And we pick up six yards. So I'm going to leave it at that. And, and look what he was playing. Again, you know, a lot of guys think, you know, they're, they're too focused on areas of the field. Who's supposed to defend that area of the field? And thinking because I have someone defending that area that you can't throw it there. What I mean by that is, let's say I have someone running to the flat and this guy has a corner out here. He may call him to run like a hard flat. So in his mind, no matter what, this flat shouldn't be open, okay? What he doesn't understand is, what if, what if we have like, you know, the back running that flat and we have 
our Y or our tight end running towards the corner like a design play to where we want you to block him. Just run into him. The ball will be out before uh, you block him anyways so we won't get called for a man illegal man downfield. And we just, you know, have a design where we turn this guy up just inside the corner. So, yeah, you're coming to defend this area, but you get popped right at the point of attack as the ball is, is on its way there, et cetera, right? So, just, I mean, like I say all that, I mean, it may, it may sound kind of foolish, but just because you have someone designed to defend a particular area, it does not mean that that area is impossible to attack, okay? We can overload it. We can fool that player. We can put a high-low stretch on that player. We can put a horizontal stretch on that player, make it to where he can never be right, etc. So, you know, this guy was calling cover two. I mean, look, cover two, our flat, because he was so sick and tired of us throwing the screen over there. What he didn't understand is, you know, when we have three players over there and you have two, we don't care that you're playing the flat. We're just going to block them. You know, block, block, you know, and you just get the ball and turn and go upfield. All right, so I'll leave it at that. Um, you know, this was the first play in the scheme that we're going to try to build on from this particular formation. This formation can be very dangerous, uh, especially when you couple it with other plays in the play in the same formation. So, hope you enjoyed the video and and uh, hope you look forward to some more action.